Okay guys, here we are. Um, it's going to be a quick uh, bit of a tutorial video on imaging with your phone and your telescope and then we'll show you through the computer and um, we'll run it through PIP uh, which will center the planet in the, um, in the field of view and it turn it into an AVI which auto stack it will uh, handle, it loves AVIs and, um, and then auto stack it will um, uh, find your best frames, sections of your best frames, stitch them all together and then give you uh, an output uh, final result and then we can throw that into Registax and we'll um, give it a quick sharpen and a colour balance and um, see how we go from there. So um, you don't need a 10 inch daub. My first images, um, actually I'll find it and I'll stick it up on the screen. One of my first images you didn't have a clue what it was and that was only two and a half, three years ago. So you just, you run what you brung as a, as a racing car term. Um, whatever you got, whatever phone you got, whatever telescope you got, that's what it is. The telescope I took my first image with was uh, 67 mil uh, in diameter, which is probably about that big. Um, I can actually throw that up on the screen as well. Um, and so everyone sort of tries to take snapshots. The trick with the planetary is beating the uh, atmospheric um, disturbances, the scene. Um, so we take a video. So if you don't already have uh, an app on your phone that you can control all the parameters with, like your um, shutter speed, your ISO, your color balance, try and find one. We'll try and link um, some in the description. It'll be all right. So what you're gonna do is you're going to get yourself, well, ultimately it is, you'll get better results with a phone holder. These things are only like 20 or 30 bucks. Um, and you will put the, your phone in them. Do it up. And center it over the eyepiece. Here we go. Should have tried this a bit better before. And once you get that into a spot. That's about it. Boom, there you go. And um, most phones these days, you don't have to touch the, tele the telescope to start it or stop it or anything like that. You can say uh, record video or something like that. But what I tended to do was I would find the planet, use the, um, the Telrad on there, find the planet, put it in the screen, center it, and sometimes I would turn, you could see which direction the planet would travel, turn your phone so that the planet ran diagonal or long ways or whatever you like there, but you get will get a longer capture um, uh, time for each pass if you don't have a, a, a tracking um, telescope. So you should do that and um, record, pause, recenter, record, and do that up to three minutes. Like oh, oh, with this resolution, size scope and three to five minutes is no problem. Auto stack it will sort it all out and um, you're not really gonna get the resolution where it starts to be um, troublesome. So um, that was basically it. I've got a video online that will um, uh, I'll show you with the planet running through and um, then we'll centralize it. So the only other thing I'll say is usually the eyepieces that came with your scope initially aren't 
normally the best and that this one came um, uh, the eyepieces that came with this scope weren't that crash shot either um, these Saboni red lines I really like they're a cheap uh, group I got a 20 mil 15 a 9 and a 6 mil they cost about $40 Australian each um, the one I found I got the best results with was a 6 mil Colossal it um, you can see there's a much bigger um, diameter objective in there but once your camera was lined up over the whole of the Colossal it just seemed to work so much better so all of my stuff regardless of whether I had that this is much better for um, visual but um, the 6mm Colossal for me was what I used to use um, to get the best results. Definitely not visual, but um, when I was doing my planetary, that was the one I always kept in there. So um, that's about it. Um, I'll try and do this in one hit with um, no edits or anything like that. We'll see how we go. So this is the image video we're going to use. And it's immediately made it big, you beauty. Here we go. And when I was doing this, I just pressed pause, repositioned, using that technique about zooming in a little bit for the um, for the capture and then pressing pause zooming back out and then the satin would still be on the chip and then I could see where it is reposition zoom in let it come into the top of the frame record again and so on and on so this one three minutes long perfect um, the all the settings were exactly as I mentioned to you before and the orientation of the phone obviously was along the path of got it all in every time you can even have it diagonal diagonals even better because it's a little bit longer but um, whatever works just get yourself a video as long as it doesn't take four or five or six minutes sort of thing but even then at this at this scale it, it doesn't really matter so this is with the three uh, sorry, the 6mm Possel. Here we go. PIP, Planetary Imaging Pre-Processor. It's a free download. Very useful little bit of gear. Alright, we've already got it in there. Go through the options. Um, the only thing on this page you need to worry about, colour or monochrome. You can leave it all at effect, it's pretty good. Click on colour, you won't have any dramas. Frame, stabilisation mode, none. Planetary, this is what we're after. So it's going to basically remove the planet off each frame and it'll stack them in the middle and um, it'll just be centralised and then auto stack at three can do its thing. Um, enable object detection. So we click on that, it's going to open it over here and I'll bring it in, but bang, spot on. So any time that this whole thing isn't in the image, it'll reject those frames. So it's picked satin out and now whenever it's not 100% in the image, it's going to reject those frames. So what we're going to have is just a video of... Um, satin in the center of the frame and um, there we go enable cropping it'd take probably eight or nine minutes to um, do this at 1080p so we'll just knock that right down um, enable cropping test options for and it's way over there we'll get rid of that um, auto detect quality if you click on that you can reorder the frames quality with the best ones first and then you can only keep 
a certain amount. So what have we got? We've got 10,000 frames there, so that's plenty. So we might only keep, well, let's say 5,000. It'll just make it a bit quicker. And so the first ones will be the best ones. Animation, output, AVI. New beauty, let's go. So I'll just come back in a second when this is done and we'll go again. Right, oh, here we go. And it, yikes. Okay guys, you can see I've stuffed that up. Make sure you check the box on the front page that is optimised for planetary. I'll run this again and I'll bring you back when we're done. Bye. Okay guys, here we go, a couple of minutes later, and we're left with 5,000 frames, stabilised and centralised in the video, on 4x480, what was it, 448 by 448 that's our AVI file, that's what auto stack it, um, likes to eat so we'll get auto stack it up drag and drop it now we'll let it decide what frames it likes the best all right that'll do bit of a muck around we got a thousand frames Right over there. It's trouble when you've got a wide screen. All right, so that's the stacked result. We go to register stacks. Click that. Drag and drop. RGB balance. So blue's back here. That's why it's a hint of green and red. Auto balance, that's pretty close. That's pretty close to what you'll see. All right, and remember, well, that's rather amusing. There's some planets there, guys. There's some moons there. Look at that. <laughs> Very surprised. What's our date? What was our date for the image? Uh, 2020, July 23rd. Bear with me, guys. We'll skip ahead, but we're going to find out what those moons are. So if we go to 2020, July 23rd, um, what was it? 9.37 and 26 seconds. Well, we won't worry about the 26 seconds, but there is Saturn. And it is Tethys and 
down. Well, there you go. As you can see there, that's those two there. Well, I'll be. Okay. We won't worry about extracting them. I just saw it when we clicked on that. It was clear they were there. Something in the data. All right, guys, we'll get rid of that. We'll use this. Maybe we use. I don't think this will, it's with a phone after all, I don't think this will do anything. Interesting. Alright guys, there you go. Processing with PIP. Auto stack it. And then register X. Alright, leave some questions. I'll get back to them. Bye for now.